Hello, and welcome to The Gone Roo Show. I'm Golda. And I'm on Roo. And this is a podcast that's just like hanging out with your two best girlfriends. It's like gaining an hour at daylight savings time, but then not having to give that hour back later on in the year. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? It's like having a pool boy, but you don't have a pool. But, but then what... what, what? do you have a pool boy for okay all right uh, it's like having a personal assistant that looks like javier bardem ah or penelope cruz and then when they help you with your projects they talk to you like this como se dice filing cabinet <laughs> <laughs> in this week's episode you'll find out why golda can have no less than three highlighters no, I can't. And you'll also find out why Juan Ru doesn't have time to play her ukulele. <laughs> what? What a bummer. That's a, so, that's a disservice to humanity. So stick around for our tips on time management. So let's, let's get, get started. started. Pronto. First up, me and Golda love to catch up. So I'm going to ask you, girl, what have you been up to? Girl, I've been up to so many things. And the most recent thing that I've been up to is last night, I went to my little niece's, she's 11 years old. I went to her first musical production that she was in. Oh, hey. So this is a really lovely elementary school where they believe in the arts and they believe in the benefits of not only having a lot of sports, but also having artistic endeavors as well, and that it helps shape children, which I absolutely believe in. So they did this production of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory yesterday. A bunch of fifth graders. God like damn. 40 fifth graders up there. God damn. All wearing the, you know, the, the Oompa Loompa outfits. They were wearing all of the Veruca Salt outfits. They're Charlie, the grandparents. And this was a legit production. This was not just Mickey Mouse production this was they learned a bunch of lines which i was thinking to myself that's a lot of lines <laughs> that this 11 year old kid you know kids have to figure out there's a lot of choreography there was gosh i want to say maybe 15 to 20 songs mm -hmm. that were in this production and there was lighting and wow. everything full-on legit like i looked at this production as if it looked like a senior, a high school senior production, musical production. Dang. Right? And it's a bunch of fifth and graders. And it was a bunch of fifth graders. So impressed. And, you know, my niece, when they first started rehearsing back in September, was disappointed because she got a role that she felt was not very big. <laughs> so she was a little disappointed but she, you know, muscled through it and she went to rehearsals. Rehearsals were Monday, Wednesday, Friday for two hours after school oh, since September. Damn, no wonder they're so like, professional. She should get her equity card. Um, <laughs> really. And, you know, and she 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 really went for it and she she did such a great job and she was really wonderful. And I feel like theater really helps folks with teamwork and mm -hmm. to teach kids at this age i mean i never had that experience did you like when you're in elementary school have nope. like a theater production not to that level no no i mean to, kudos to this school and to this district that they have the wherewithal to to think about these things and plan for it yeah. and how much of a lasting impression is this going to have on all of these kids moving True. forward True. i thought that that was a really wonderful way to to implement or instill. It's a great way to instill teamwork, creativity, and, you know, so many other really wonderful things in kids, uh, you know, at such a young age. I was so impressed. I, I really, I, I love to see that. And I, I love to see especially arts being uh, introduced to kids at, at that age and at that level. I mean, this is not just, like I said, rudimentary theatrical production here the kids were heavily involved in set designing and sound and they worked with this outside vendor to make those things happen everything costumes the yeah whole thing. they had the fifth graders doing the catering and yeah. the fifth graders the contracts you know, doing the makeup the contracts yeah. the, the pay negotiations yeah. right it was all fifth grade 
Exactly. Talent. We're just dance gonna... captains. <laughs> we're all fifth graders. Choreographers. I mean, amazing amazing so anyway the what i what i took away from that is that the future is looking very bright oh looking at these kids it was a very heartwarming oh, very heartwarming experience i'm so glad i did it but that's what's happening with me that's the latest that i i i took a pause i took Wait, a pause so you said you're so glad you did it meaning you're so glad you that i went you went okay 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 yeah because i was feeling a little <laughs> sniffler <laughs> But I was like, no, I want to check it out. And I'm so glad I did. And she was so wonderful in it, my little niece. And uh, she was so happy. And she's really fantastic. She's so going to be a ball buster. So you said at first that she was disappointed in the yeah. role she got. How did she feel after the whole production was over? I think she loved it. She loved it. She she was still on a high even after the production was over. She's all smiles. She's so proud of herself and really happy. And she, she did a really great job. She... Actually, the truth is she was wearing sunglasses and she said she wouldn't let anyone close to her because she had yes. bodyguards around her at all times. Yeah. She's like, talk to my people. <laughs> I'll have my people call <laughs> your people. No, I'm just kidding. That sounds awesome. Yeah. So I thought that was a very life affirming, uh, very hopeful uh, introduction to our future generation. Yay. Yeah. What about you, Wanru? What is girl? What you been up to? <laughs> What girl, you been up to, girl? I've been not eating wheat or dairy in oh. the month of January. Why? I was trying to cure my eczema okay. by doing an elimination diet. Okay. I had tried this last January. I tried to do a program called Whole30, yeah. which is an extremely restrictive elimination diet. And yeah. I fell off the bandwagon every single week. Mm. And I thought this year I'm going to try to avoid just two things, just dairy and wheat, but be super strict about it. That's tough because dairy and wheat are in a lot of things. It's in a lot of things, even yeah. soy sauce. Oh, I know, Which is right? one of my staple foods, being Asian. Dairy isn't in soy sauce, right? <laughs> <laughs> hmm, I so, that milky sensation in the... Uh... <laughs> Pardon me. Bless you. And the, the soy sauce. It, that's wheat, right? The soy sauce. Exactly. Okay. And... If dairy gets in your soy sauce, something has really, something bad has happened. Something has A Kickle Man Chuck just <laughs> ran into a cow or something <laughs> like that because that is the merging of two mm. horrible worlds. But anyways, the mm. point is I have eczema on my neck and on my scalp. Mm. And I had heard that removing some of these common irritants, mm. uh, inflammatory things from your diet might help yeah did it, it help it didn't really help oh it didn't it didn't really help so on the mm. 29th only 29 days into my thing i didn't make it to 31 it was golda's birthday uh oh and then they gave us a huge gigantic brownie sunday uh oh and golda and you came golda golda doesn't eat any any no sweets. sweets any sugar by the way sugar is very anti very inflammatory mm -hmm. and gertie doesn't and then our friend ronnie would be the only one eating it so i was like just give it to me look at my neck oh was look that was that the first time he's <laughs> oh shit it's all, it's all good i didn't it's know, it's know that it was delicious uh -oh. it was delicious Whoops. and then when i was eating the <laughs> vanilla ice cream i was like that's dairy <laughs> oh yes of you course. went you went for it oh yeah full like on dairy and flour <laughs> I was like, how, Oops. Did, how is ice cream so creamy? I was like, how is it so amazing? You got philosophical creamy. as you were eating the ice cream. I was. Because this whole month, I have been drinking nut milks. I've been drinking almond uh, milk and all these other non-dairy milks. It's chalk water. It is. It's total chalk how water. How did you know? I, I used to drink. Well, I, I, can, I, I can drink almond milk and all that. Yeah. yeah. And it's so yeah. chalky, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I was eating this ice cream. It's just this normal vanilla ice cream. Mm. And I was mushing it around my mouth and I go, what a delightful texture. <laughs> what is this creaminess? What is this sensation of this smoothness in my <laughs> mouth? What is this mouth? It's dairy. Oh, boy. It's amazing dairy. It's uh, a beautiful thing, dairy. It's cream and milk. Anyways, regardless, I'm glad I tried it. Yeah. I'm, I was happy to partake in the brownie Sunday because my skin wasn't better. Mm. And I recommend it for everybody. It didn't work for me in this particular scenario. Mm. But it goes to show that if mm. you set your mind to something, you can do it if you know what your motivation is. 
because mm. I had so many birthday cakes in the month of January. Yeah, and people would try to get me to eat it, and I was like, no, thank you, because mm-hmm. I knew what my end goal was. Yeah, right. And when I saw that my end goal was not any closer, I go, give me that brownie sundae, <laughs> gluten and dairy. <laughs> Every day, all day, every day. So what you're saying is the timing of my birthday was late enough in January yes. where you felt like it was it was a good decision to, to go for the yes, brownie exactly. and, and ice was, cream. If Got it was it. January 2nd, I would have passed. Yes. But if it, yeah. it was January 29th, so it was a okay. good time. Girl, you got to get your um, allergies checked. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I think that's what that, you know, th- I think they do that, right? That you can have those allergy tests mm-hmm. done, right? And mm-hmm. maybe that's a way to... Find out what your, um, you know, who does that are those like DNA places. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They can test you to see like what kind of allergies you have. Yeah. Also. So I will do that. And then you can, re- I'll report back on our next girl. Girl. What, what you, you been, been up to? to? Our topic today is everything as it relates to time management. That sounds so corporate. <laughs> Time management strategies. <laughs> oh, I'm corporate. I wear a suit. How can we be as efficient as possible? <laughs> so what what are we trying to do here, Wanru, when we're talking about time management? What does this mean? I would like to coach <laughs> it in a different way. Okay. I would like you to grab your time by the balls yeah. and tell it who's boss. Or we can grab time by the vulva. <laughs> And tell her who's boss. Either way, you just yeah, yeah. pick whatever, whatever whatever imagery works for you. Right. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. And, okay. And and why is it important? Because time <laughs> gets away from you. And actually, I have a great quote to illustrate this. Okay. It's from Greg McEwen, the author of Essentialism, hmm. and he says, "Remember that if you don't prioritize your life, someone else will." Mm. Oh, isn't that deep? Yeah, it is deep. And it's absolutely true. How many times have you been in a situation where the year just runs away with you and you have nothing to show for it or the month runs away from you or the mm-hmm. day runs away from you and you don't know what you did? Yeah. Right? So time management is important in order to what? Goal set? In order to achieve goals? What to is make it? sure you're living a life authentic to your true desires. And what you want and to maximize your enjoyment and happiness. Awesome. Awesome. So that's my viewpoint on it. But let me ask you, do you feel like you are good at time management in general, Golden? I am very much average. (laughs) (laughs) I am straight down the middle average. I don't think I'm a, a phenomenal time management person, but I don't think I suck either. What about you? I don't think you are sucking at time management either yeah and because you hold a nine to five job nine to six or whatever and you still are able to do the podcast and all these other things you might be slightly above average oh thank you Wanru Mm -hmm. that makes me feel good coming from you (laughs) and I am also slightly above average so here's two slightly (laughs) above average people who are gonna give you some tips on time management and hopefully these are a plus tips Versus slightly above average. Slightly tips. above. Instead of 75%, we're aiming for 90%. Today. Yes. Okay. Yes. So before we begin yeah. into these hardcore tips, okay. let's just get real. Can you tell us about a time that you wasted so much time and were so bad at time management? Oh my gosh. I got so many stories for I you, girl. Ha- oh, tell me. I want to hear it. I think What's my yours? worst habit is looking for something to watch. Oh. Instead of just watching something. I will spend 20 minutes <laughs> looking for something. I will be on that Netflix main screen mm. for like 20 minutes, reading mm. descriptions, watching previews, trying to figure out what is like the optimal show to start watching. Mm. And, Good one. Or on YouTube scrolling for the video I want to watch for 15 minutes <laughs> instead of just watching something for 15 minutes. This is my own personal worst habit. Mm. What about yourself? My my worst habit is that I, if I know that I need to do something and I just don't want it, it's more procrastination. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So that's what like a cousin of, of time management or mm-hmm. an issue there. So yeah, I think it's procrastination where I will circle around the thing that needs to be done, look at it, leave it in the room, <laughs> exit the room, come back into the room and see it there. 
Uh, that's definitely my 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 worst, I think, is when something feels so daunting mm-hmm. and something feels so overwhelming that I would rather do anything else but that thing. Right. And right. that this is not uncommon. I think it's quite common. Mm. So we actually have some tips to that today to help tackle that. Actually. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This All is right. exciting. I, I feel like I need to learn some some best practices as well. Okay. So we're going to present each of us mm-hmm. tips from some experts, and then we're going to present our own personal best time management tips. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are you ready? I think yes. I am ready. <laughs> I am so, ready. Do you, which who, who wants to go first? Well, I think that you had mentioned that we have tips from experts, which <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I have tips from experts versus the internet. <laughs> okay. So you have experts, I think, that you are culling from. Exactly. So why don't, why don't you start from these experts? What, what have you learned? Okay. So I've already brought him up in another podcast, mm. but I think it's such a good tip. I'm going to bring him up again. Okay. Mr. Warren Buffett. Oh, one of yes. the richest investors and men in the world. Mm. How does he do it? Right. Yes. He doesn't have much time. He must be doing something right. Yeah. <laughs> right. He's got all kinds of good best practices. What does he say about <laughs> exactly? Time so he recommends making a list. So take some time, sit down, get a piece of paper and spend a couple of minutes writing down all the things you want to accomplish in your life. Mm. It could be things like I want to learn how to play golf. I want to develop a strong relationship with my family. I want to buy a house. I want to lose 10 pounds, whatever it is, Mm. write them all down and then make the call the list down to 25 top Mm -hmm. things you want to accomplish in your life and then call it down even more to the top five things. Mm. So you can rank them one through 25, but Mm. basically you're not going to focus on anything except for your top five. Wow. Because Mm. 20 to 25 are distracting you from one to five. Mm. And actually, we don't actually have as many resources and we're not as good as multitasking as we think we are. Yeah. He says five things is a lot for any person to try to accomplish. Mm. And actually, he would go down the list one through five. So let's say number one thing is spend more time with my family or cultivate a good relationship. Mm -hmm. You should work on that until you feel that solid Mm -hmm. before moving on to number two, which would be improving my golf swing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or whatever that is. He says, you cannot move down the list until you've nailed or crossed off the first item. Mm -hmm. And that's because the more you focus on something undivided, the more you're likely to accomplish it. You know, that brings up an excellent point then. So it sounds to me like Warren Buffett doesn't really believe in multitasking. He does not. Where multitasking, I think people believe that multitasking is actually saving time, but Mm -hmm. it's not saving time. Actually for deep thinking, no. So for laundry and cleaning and cooking, Mm -hmm. things that don't require deep focus, multitasking is probably great. Okay. Right. So you can do, you can throw in a load of laundry while you start your chicken soup. Right. Okay. That's fine. But Uh, when you're talking about your business, mm -hmm. your work, your finances, anything where you requires deep focus, Mm. a lot of writers practice this. Mm. They need undivided time to focus. Mm -hmm. And right now we have more demands on our attention than ever. Sure. People phones. There's there's just so many more ways to be distracted. Okay. So for a lot of these top performers, I'm talking about CEOs, these really rich, high performing entrepreneurs, they block out three or four hours just to think mm-hmm. and focus on a subject because it's that deep level thinking that allows them to accomplish that. Got it. So that's more of a day-to-day time management ritual, mm-hmm. which is allow your uh, time to focus on those very important things in your life. Mm. Um, Warren Buffett's tip is more big picture of your life. Got it. And what should you be spending your time on every day? Mm. It's those top five things. Mm. Everything else, throw it by the side. Yes, okay? it's prioritizing what's the absolute most important things. Mm-hmm. And by using focus mm. to actually eliminate those things from the list, those other things move up a little bit more. So if you get rid mm. of number one, three, and five, you can move three more things up your list. And that's how you clear your list Mm. by having so many things you're trying to prioritize. Mm. You actually don't get anything done is his point. Too much clutter. Clutter. Back to the (laughs) decluttering. It all comes back to Marie Kondo. It sure does. Or as I was schooled by our friend Glenn (laughs) Surovich on the proper pronunciation of it's Maria Kondo. (laughs) What? What is that again? Marie Kondo. (laughs) 
Maria yet? Uh, oh gosh, I I botched it. It's Maria Kondo, Kondo, or something. Yeah. Maria Kondo? Uh, it's probably Maria. Just <laughs> <laughs> got a little Spanish in there, um, but yeah, I think everything goes back to the most simple, the most the high the highest priorities. I think also too in breaking down your former list of twenty five down to to a list of five. You're prioritizing and also you get a chance to revisit some of the other things that you listed down and maybe they don't they don't deserve a spot on the list at all anymore at all. Mm -hmm. Right. And Mm -hmm. I think it helps reframe uh, and prioritize. And I I think that that's really important because I think that we get into this sense of having to accomplish. Yes. Or having to check off something off our list. And for a lot of people that makes them feel good that they're able to check things off the list when it should be refrained, reframed to it. Sh- maybe it shouldn't even be on your list. <laughs> uh-huh, right. Uh-huh, and working more, more smart. It's true. Cause <laughs> even if you're doing a lot of things and you're being very busy, mm. are those actions or is the time spent on those things working towards your goal? And also what is your goal? And what is important mm. to you? And I'll give you a really good example of this is mm. Ariana Huffington, mega, mega Moogle. Yeah. Yeah. She was the founder of Huffington Post. Yeah. And she sold that company. She's moving on to another company called Thrive right, right now, which mm-hmm. is more wellness based. She had a health scare. Like she just passed yeah. out and like hit her head wow. on the desk yeah. working. And she realized that her priorities, that list was kind of upside down or fucked up. It was, yeah. it was not really conducive to her lifestyle. And she realized she had so many things on her must accomplish list, including learning German. That was one of her her main life goals. And Mm. she realized, you know what? I've only got so many more years left to live. Mm. And learning learning German is not going to be able to Mm -hmm. be on my list Mm because I've got five or ten other more important things than learning German. Mm. And one of the things she began to prioritize is sleep. Oh, yeah. Because she wasn't sleeping before that. Yeah. And that's why she passed out and she knocked her head. And it could have been very, very lethal, actually. Yeah. So she realized sleep is going right to the very top. It's like her number one or two or three right now. Wow. So she's prioritized that. And Mm -hmm. every other part of her life life has come come into alignment for that. But without sitting down and really making that list for yourself, you don't know. And everyone's Mm. list, list is different. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Anyway, so that's my expert tip from an okay. expert man, Warren Buffett. And and uh, does he have any other tips that you wanted to share? Oh gosh, probably on investing and stuff like that. But that was <laughs> that was my best time management tip from oh, Warren Buffett. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Good one. Good one. Actually, that dovetails nicely into something that I, I had I had discovered in um, trying to figure out best practices for time management was sleep. What? Sleep was actually something that ranks very high on many must have lists of how to be a better time manager so, is to get that seven to eight hours of sleep per per day. So this is from experts or from your own personal experience? Uh, both, both for sure. For sure. I definitely feel like I have more energy to to tackle some of the more challenging things of the day if I'm well rested, if I mm-hmm. feel good, then I'm, and then my head is clear, then I can focus and do the, the big tasks that need to be done or even do the smaller tasks. I can do those things faster. <laughs> the funny uh, thing yeah. is a lot of people would think, no, actually sleeping is wasting time because mm. that's taking up my valuable time. Whereas I could mm-hmm. be doing something. Yeah, yeah. So well, how do you uh, argue against that? Or what's your counterpoint to that? My counterpoint to that is that the quality of your output will be better if you are well rested and you're in a mindset where you can think through things or think f- or do things in a better way and a higher quality, given more high quality, if you are rested. Think about it. When was the last time you felt exhausted or you were sick or... Oh, you're like, oh, if I only had another hour, I could be so much better right now. (laughs) Or how many of you have had power naps of 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and you, you rejuvenate just like that. I've had that happen where I'll take a little power nap. 
Um, I used to work at this company where they had rooms nice. where you in the restroom, like right before you enter the restroom, there was a little vestibule area. <laughs> and during lunch, people would go in there and take naps. And I did that a couple of times and it made all the difference. It's, it's, you're, you're recharging your batteries. Right? If I had my own company, I would definitely have a nap room oh, or totally. nap permitted policy for sure. Absolutely. But I believe that sleep is imperative to your performance in, in your health as mm-hmm. well. So sleep, I, I believe you actually mentioned this a couple of episodes ago about how sleep is directly related to your health and how your heart works and how, you know, oxygen gets to your cells. I mean, yeah. just on the physiological level on a biological level of sleep is, is very important. Um, and if you know, you're only using this body and this brain to, to, to perform the functions you need for the day, you're, you need to be at, at your best in order to do those things. Mm-hmm. So time management tip, prioritize your sleep, manage your time so you can get enough sleep so that you'll be more productive in the day and in a better mood and you'll be yeah. more enjoyable for your coworkers and other people to be around. Yeah. And I think too, that if you don't have enough sleep, a lot of times your immunity goes down. So yes. you're also more susceptible to getting sick and then that's going to be a time suck, right? right? If you get sick, then you can't do other things. It's very right? true. So it's all related. Ends up saving you time because you're not getting sick. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Wonderful tip. So that was my first. What's your next one? Okay. So I already shared my expert tips. Do you have any more expert tips you want to share? I don't have any expert tips. All, all of hers are just <laughs> things she read on the bathroom wall. These <laughs> are, are picked up from Instagram. I'm just kidding. When She's, I was at Ralph's, I asked the checker, yeah. Francis, my favorite. Hi, Francis. Hi, Francis. You're awesome. Thanks for listening. Uh, <laughs> She, you know, I talk to her. She tells me things. Yes. This is from the ground. This is like down there. That is time management. <laughs> trying to get podcast ideas when you're in the grocery store. Absolutely. Like as we're trying to figure out, like doing, during the price checks, <laughs> you know, we got some time to kill before we get that price check. And asking her, what's your time at? What's some your time, best time management skills? Yeah. I mean, actually, I'm very proud of you for Thank making you. good use of your time like Thank that. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you very much. All right. So now I'm going to get into uh, personal tips. Okay. Of which gold, all of gold is our personal tips. But okay. you also research them a little bit on the internet, right? Sure. Okay. So what I do is <laughs> I do a mini version of Warren Buffett's self-evaluation every day. So oh. usually it's right when I get to work because... Uh, I'm usually in a rush to get to work. So oh. when I, by the time I sit at my desk and I've logged into my computer, I go in through my mind, I go, what are the most important things I must accomplish today? Mm. And what is helpful or beneficial to do personally, mm-hmm. work-wise, and towards my goals, towards my five Warren Buffett goals. Mm. So what I have done is I've put a little sticky note next to my computer mm-hmm. with my top five goals. But then I don't put it down because my, my, you know, my coworkers are there. So mm. I make a little symbol. So for oh. my love life, I put like a little heart. And then for money, I draw a little money sign. You know, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> because no way would they ever decipher that. <laughs> That's your own little language <laughs> that nobody else knows. Uh, oh, yeah okay okay yeah, okay sure. i draw yeah, yeah. using my hieroglyphic yes impossible this is very to break sophisticated crypto, sophisticated <laughs> no i put it on the side so nobody can see but I it's see. a little post-it okay but in case okay. anybody were is, is gonna snoop it's just these little logos okay. to myself. It's just a reminder to myself so <laughs> so I, let me ask you yeah, yeah yeah so you for your love life it's a heart yeah so if you have it on the post-it it's heart and then next to it is whatever you have to do as it relates to your love life? No, no. It just, oh. I, I list the top five things that are priorities in my life uh, and I draw a symbol. Okay. So like earn more money would be draw money. I see. Uh, I put a little, okay. I, I, I put a little, you know, those clickers that people use for yeah. movies for yeah. my creative side. So I see. What do you call that clicker thing? It's time. Cl- it's a clicker. Clicker. <laughs> you know those movie things where people write the scene and they go click action. Yes, yes. I write. I drew one of those little things in, in there. Oh, Good luck trying to figure out what that is. Boy, because my career, my penmanship is really bad. <laughs> then I, you know, and I drew a little house to remind me to be mini- minimalistic. Oh, yeah. Good luck. You see. Oh, great. Now, now everyone knows my. Now you know my the code. Co- the codes have been disclosed. 
<laughs> exactly. So what I so a day for me might be coming to work, saying today I am going to write this report. I'm going to order these reagents. I'm going to check in with my boss about this. Mm-hmm. Top four things. Okay. And then in, in preparation for tomorrow, I'm going to contact this person, this person, this person. So mm-hmm. I, I have my list ready to go. Mm-hmm. And then I said, personally, what's urgent for me? Mm-hmm. Paying the bill. Mm. Paying the bill, replying to this email, making a list of things to buy for the following day. And then mm-hmm. after my personal life, I also go through my list and I cultivate mm-hmm. that. And then when, and then if I have extra time, I go to my post and note with my five life priorities. So what can I do today in terms of love? Oh. Let me message back those guys on those dating apps <laughs> that I've been <laughs> neglecting. They're very nice gentlemen. I should really reply. Uh-huh. So then uh-huh. I will message them uh-huh. to make sure that I'm keeping those lines alive. Hey guys, what's up? Okay. You know, keeping, okay. Up, keeping it going. Okay. So, but if I didn't invest a little bit of time in those things every day, Mm. who knows what kind of progress i'd be yeah. making right yeah so that's my personal best tip which is take some time every day to plan your day prioritize yeah. what you have to do some people might like to do this the night before some people are mm. like they'd rather do it the night before mm. and like pick out their clothes and pack their lunch and stuff so some people mm-hmm. are the night before people mm-hmm. i like to do because at night i like to unwind i don't want to think about my day mm-hmm. i like to do it in the morning Interesting. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I uh, what I use is we have an Outlook calendar at work that we use. Mm -hmm. So, for example, on a Monday morning, uh, if if I want to plan for even my Tuesday, sometimes I do that. Yes, uh, yes. that's what I do. Mm -hmm. Or if I know that something will require multi steps. I'll look at Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and I will block off time on my calendar and it will actually say it on my calendar, one hour, 30 minutes or whatever, work on job description for nice. blah, blah, blah. Nice. You know, and, and I'll, I'll put it in ahead of time. And that way I know I have the satisfaction of knowing that peace of mind that I'm actually going to work on this thing and I'm, I'm chipping away at the, the big goal. So, yeah, I think that's helpful to kind of plan ahead a little bit or to have a goal of what you want to accomplish that day or the following day Mm -hmm. um, and to be mindful of those things ahead of time. I think the common theme for you and I in terms of Mm -hmm. this planning thing is to stop. It's just to get off that rat wheel. Stop being so reactive. Exactly. I think think a lot of people have this feeling and I have this, too, where you just going at what's being thrown at you in the Mm -hmm. moment and you're on this rat wheel and you're running and you're running Mm -hmm. and you're running. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is it, or, or even worse, you don't know what's happening out there. It's just big, ambiguous blob of whatever's happening. And you don't know how, what's going to come at you and you don't know how to handle it. Mm. So you take charge of your time. Yeah. You You grab it by the vulva. Vulva. (laughs) I'm sorry. This is very vulgar. But we hope that the vulgarity will help. Will rem- help you remember. Help you remember. It'll be seared in your brain. Yeah. So in, instead of being a, <laughs> in a rat, being a rat race, or this worst ambiguous blob, or just you're just it's a swamp and you're just trying to trudge through. Yeah. You're like I'm clearing a path for myself. Yeah. Hey, I may fall off the path. Yeah. Not everything goes smoothly. Yeah, it's okay. I see the path, and the path leads to where you want to be, mm-hmm. how you want to feel. Yep. And where your next goal will be. Yeah. Versus just like, well, I don't know. I'm just wandering through life. Oh God, branches are hitting me in the face. What do I do now? Mm. That's how I feel when I don't do these practices. Yeah. Okay. So, Mm. so so buy the vulva, buy the the balls. (laughs) Take control. Take control. Okay. Take control. All right. So that's my personal best tip. What about you? My personal best tip is I realize the irony (laughs) of it. (laughs) but I'm just going to say it anyway. And that is you have to declutter. What? Why is this ironic? Because I feel like I'm still in that in-between stage of, you know, like hoarder and Marie Kondo. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm in the process of trying to declutter my life in various phases. So Mm -hmm. clothes, office, electronics, work, 
friends, you know, Mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. So many different little buckets. But I feel like in order to be an effective time manager or have your, your finger on the pulse of your time, you have to declutter whether it's your space that you're working at or the space that you're working in, whether it's uh, whatever systems you have in place. Is it too much? Do you know where things are? Like if you needed (laughs) it, Um, having a, having a good organizational system and getting rid of things so that everything is, is laid out and you can see what you have in front of you, or you know where to go if you need something. I think, I think how many times have have I been in a situation where I'm working on something and I'm like, oh yeah, I wanted to quote that I'm working on like a, a, a paper or something. And, you know, I'm like, oh, where's that quote from that one? And then I'm looking through my desk, looking at the drawers. I'm looking at my phone. Did I put it, did I put it there? Did I, did I take myself saying it? You know, and I'm looking all over the place for this thing. Next thing I know, it's 30 minutes later and I haven't found it. Versus had I been a little bit more organized, in my filing system, I could have said, oh, yeah, that quote from Mark Twain, where was that again? I could Google it or, you know, I could look at at my files that I may have already put together. So having a, a, a clean, simple space where you know where everything is, I think is, is going to shave off a lot of time. So declutter <laughs> is my personal recommendation. Time for time management. Yes. First of all, I want to applaud you for working on your decluttering thank you and i want you to know it's not easy it is not it's not easy and guess what it's never ending as well it's never ending because let me tell you i marie (laughs) kondo my bedside table and i was so proud i put things in boxes you should be proud and that was a month ago it's maybe 50 (laughs) percent still marie kondo Meaning it's, it crept back. It crept, it crept back in there, you know, the the habits. So so it it takes some mindfulness, you know, in, totally. in this. So yeah. And I think that's sort of a misconception that people have about minimalism mm-hmm. or Marie Condoing or de- decluttering, which is that it's this one and done thing. No, it's not. It's ongoing. Yes. And it's a practice. It's a practice. It's like meditation or mindfulness. You practice it. So it's a habit. <laughs> it's a habit. Yeah. And I applaud you for trying to work towards the more minimalistic spectrum. Yeah. I just want everyone to know out there, especially because minimalism has been so huge. There is a sweet spot for you individually Mm -hmm. where you're going to feel like this is the perfect amount of stuff for me. Hmm. This is the perfect amount. I can find what I need. Hmm. Everything's easy to access. I don't think about my stuff. I just coexist with it. I feel good. The energy's good. I'm the master of my domain, Mm, you know? Yeah. And everyone's perfect point is different. It's like a balance point. Mm -hmm. Some people need more things to feel cozy. I would like to live in a, inside of a bank vault. I'd be okay with that. Are you serious? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, you're just giving giving an example. (laughs) example. Like, you know those I'm like, wow, I didn't know that. (laughs) Have you seen those like Japanese tea houses or those like, those those, uh, mid-century houses that are all made of glass and look over like a a cliff? Yeah. I'd be okay with that. (laughs) Not everybody wants to live in a glass cube. Yeah. I'd be okay with that. But the point is, everyone (laughs) has their balance point some people like cozy some people like spare Mm. but when you you'll know the sweet spot when you go this is the perfect amount of stuff for me Mm. Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. so that's my little side note on minimal minimalism but back to you good for you for for doing that and i can definitely already tell the difference in terms of it's nice knowing where things are. <laughs> it's nice having a an organized filing system or t- nice, you know, having a good like, uh, you know, email filing system. It's it's nice to know where things are. It makes things so much easier. And not only that, but when you do look for something where you don't know where anything is, the emotional like frustration that you yeah. feel that's taking its toll on you too in whatever way. Right. So So, actually it's one of those practices where if you invest more time in the front end, you get Mm -hmm. benefits in the back end. Absolutely. And I, I, I see that now. I definitely see that now. And, and it has a lot of uh, benefits to it. One of them being time management and feeling better about everything. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Okay, great. What's your next one? Okay. So as I mentioned, I like to evaluate what, 
needs to be done every day and mm-hmm. make myself a little mini list every day. Now, there are two approaches to tackling that list. Okay. One, which we've talked about already, Golda. Okay. It's called eating the frog. Okay. Okay. Well, what I, is I'll that? have you explain eating the frog. No, you explain Me? it. Me? Okay. All right. Okay. So <laughs> eating the frog, who is, a, it's a quote from who? Mark Twain. Mark Twain. Yeah. Means do the hard thing first. Mm. Whatever is the most onerous, mm-hmm. most annoying, or maybe it's just something you're dreading to do on your list. If you tackle that first, it, everything else on your list goes downhill. Mm-hmm. And it'll solve the problem that you have, Golda, of circling back on the task over and over again because mm-hmm. you're trying to avoid it. Mm-hmm. So a lot of energy is spent avoiding something we hate to do. Yeah. Right? Not only yeah. time, but mental energy because it's sitting in the back of your mind just plaguing you. Yeah. You know, and I, I've, I've heard about this approach before where, you know, when you're looking at your day and you're like, okay, what do I tackle first? Here's this big list of things that I need to do. And what you're saying is eat the frog, Mark Twain, um, tackle the biggest, gnarliest, hairiest, grossest, (laughs) slimiest thing first. And I think I see the reason behind that because I find that I'm a lot more energetic and I'm a lot more open and focused in the early part of the day. As most people are. Actually. Right. Yes. So you're at your best, supposedly, mm-hmm. in the early part of your day. So if the first thing that you tackle in the morning is this big, hairy, audacious thing yes. and you are equipped uh, as much as possible and you're the clearest uh, in, at that time of the day, then you're you're set to win basically, I mm-hmm. think, versus if you postpone it to the end of the day when you're already tired and you're in a bad mood, maybe, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, or you're hungry or what And what are you. the odds that you're going to push it to the next day? Oh, highly likely. Highly likely. <laughs> highly likely. Yeah. You don't want, you don't have time for that. So yes, I, I believe that. I think you should tackle the biggest thing, first. thing first. Okay. So that's what I do. Yeah, that, that's my personal philosophies. I always mm. swallow the frog, as they say, and then afterwards everything tastes great. You're like, "Ooh, this piece mm. of bread tastes good. The saltine. I just ate a frog. Anything tastes mm. good now." Uh, although there is an opposite mindset sure. to this, which is called the snowball effect. Sure. Now, some people need to do little things first to gain a little self confidence. Yeah. So what happens is they work in reverse order. They do small things like I folded the laundry, I dusted. I'm doing really good. Mm. I think I can start paying my bills. All right. I did that. (laughs) All right. No, no. So then they, then they work up to it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So they gain self-confidence and they feel momentum. Yeah. So figure out which works for you. Either swallow the frog or roll the snowball. Yeah. You know, and it depends on the day, right? Yeah. And it depends on your energy and how much sleep you got. Yeah. Because if you got only five hours of sleep and you've got this big gargantuan, hairy, ugly thing that you need to do, you Mm -hmm. you might not be up for it and you might not feel like you can do it the first thing. And yet these smaller things also need your attention. So maybe you do need to focus on those smaller, just focus on the smaller things for now. Mm -hmm. So I think that it also depends on your energy level and a lot of the which which path you decide to to start first is is heavily reliant on how you're feeling that day. Mm-hmm. I think that's a piece that's um, that people don't necessarily think of when they think of time management. They don't think of wellness. They don't think of oh. health. Oh, right. Oh, okay. but it's actually very related in terms of how effective you can be with your time. And also how, if you're too much of a Nazi about your time management, what kind of toll is that taking on you? (laughs) Yeah. Also, right? Yeah. Um, So, yeah, I think that as it relates to the Mark Twain big frog thing and the snowball effect, it it depends a lot, I think, on your preference and what works for you. But at least you've got some go-tos. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll give you a quick example of my coworker using this technique to her benefit. And it's actually having to do with emotional tasks. Oh, what does that mean? So as we get older and she's a little bit older, she's near retirement age, her friends have started to pass away and her relatives have started to pass away. Oh no. So she knows one of the things that she'll have to do occasionally is to call that relative Mm. and say, I'm sorry, your husband or wife or your whoever Mm. relative passed away. She hates it. She dreads this. This is the most onerous task that she has to do. Oh, okay. And, and you know, you, you yeah, might have for a good reason, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might have an equivalent of that. So 
She mm. likes to tackle that on the weekend when she's feeling good and she's in an upbeat mindset and she likes to do it right away. Mm. Okay. Cause so she'll wake up on a Saturday and, mm. you know, don't have to go to work. So, you know, and she'll make that phone call and she'll mm. get it out of the way. Mm. She swallows the frog right away. And then it mm -hmm. clears her mind. She's like, I did it. It's off of her mind. It's off of her conscious. Mm -hmm. She feels great. Mm -hmm. But some people might be the opposite. Mm -hmm. It's hard to make that phone call. They might need to do a couple of things like talk to other people first mm -hmm. and then work them, their way up to do Play it. some video games. <laughs> Play some for six hours. <laughs> Play well, a little Call of Duty first. Yeah. Watch a little Netflix <laughs> for six hours. <laughs> so you got to get yourself in a upbeat mood. Yeah. To be able to do that. And so you got to find what works for you. Yeah. As long as the task gets done. But practice some self-awareness in this. Yeah. Good one. Good yeah. one. Awesome. Okay. Well, my next one is something that I actually look forward to um, around the December time frame. Um, Clearance Christmas shopping? <laughs> yes. In addition to that. <laughs> okay. In addition to that. I also look forward to finding a planner. Oh, yes. Fine. On clearance? On clearance? No, they're usually hiked up around December because oh, yeah, they know everybody sense. like wants to get it before the new year. Duh, yeah, of course. Yes, yeah, yeah, but but usually what I, I love to do is, um, and I've definitely cycled through different types of planner offerings. And what I mean by planner is like the day planners or like, like a paper paper thing. Yes. Thing, yeah, physical, tangible planner. So not Outlook, not your phone, none, none of that. None of these apps, but an actual thing, old school, where you write it, you put post-its on it, you do all kinds of, you know, color code it. Um, and now they even have these things called bullet journals. Yes, they do. Right. Mm -hmm. Where you can, the, the act of putting in different colors and drawing and things like that. I believe the philosophy is will help you stick with those things and also to remember what you need to do. So what I like to do is I like to uh, find a new planner for myself Fantastic. and something cool and fun and inspirational. I mean, Franklin Covey, I think, is one of the popular ones out there and they have various designs, et cetera. And I've had Franklin Covey planners before and they're really great. Uh, they're sort of mid-level, maybe in terms of price point, but they can get pretty pricey. Um, but I've recently discovered another type of planner that's created by this woman named Erin Condren. How do you spell that? C-O-N-D-R-E-N -E is the last name. And I believe she's got some standalone shops around town. I think that she recently opened one up here in LA, but you can also find her, her, um, planners on Amazon. You can also, uh, see it on, um, uh, her own website as well. Um, uh, but she's, she used to be at Staples. I don't know if she's there anymore, but, and she has various sizes and she has like quotes in it and, and what, where I, where it's helped me is I'm a highly visual person and where I will need to see what does my year look like? January, February, March, April, May, June, July, et cetera. What does my month look like? Those month at a glance setups are very, very important for me and, and helps me plan my, my days. Uh, so having a really great calendar that you enjoy and that you like putting stuff in, I think is, is, Help can be potentially helpful for you. So finding a planner that you like, Erin Condren is a really good one. And I think her background is she's actually like a time management guru. So she's implemented a lot of what she's learned in her own life and with her different companies and put this calendar system together. So uh, not that I'm advocating her, not that we're getting paid, dream sponsor, Erin <laughs> Condren, but, uh, but I think that that is potentially something to look at is what planners, if you're a, a, a sort of visceral, tangible type of person that needs that, that that's something that I think would be a, a, an excellent tool for you. And actually people are now advocating for use of putting pen to paper. Why it's, is that you think? Because everything's so digital and intangible mm. nowadays, it doesn't really stick. I mean, as corny as it sounds, we still are human beings living mm. in a physical world. We're not just ideas and thoughts. So by putting mm -hmm. things pen to paper, it helps mm -hmm. you to organize your thoughts. Yes. And it actually makes things more concrete. 
Yes. And you say you're a visual person, but I would say that 80 to 90% of people need yeah. a visual aid. Very few of us have mm -hmm. a picture perfect memory. So that's yeah. a great, great tip. And also there is definitely a huge sense of satisfaction that I get when I accomplish something and I could put the check mark next to it. I'm definitely one of those people. Oh, that, I, I like checking it off the, the list. Awesome. Make, make that Feels work good. for you. Make that work for you, right? Feels good. And I like my, my different colored pens that I use to color code <laughs> yeah so find a journal yeah. or a day planner that you love to use and that yeah. like that you like yeah. yeah and that that you look forward to looking at because it's so cute and cool and you feel mm -hmm. organized yeah and a little tip i have for you for those digital people i use my digital calendar on my phone a lot is that you can actually sync calendars for different people so for example for your mm -hmm. partner or for your family members mm -hmm. you can actually have a for example, a Tang family calendar mm -hmm. and you can put things in there and they'll have different colors in your, right? In your Google right. calendar. So right. you can see that there's an upcoming family reunion on the yeah. 14th. Right. So yeah. you're saying Gmail has like a calendar. Correct. I should clarify. G the Gmail app, mm. it syncs with your phone and it syncs with the desktop Mm -hmm. uh, the web, uh, the desktop computer or your laptop mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So you can have different calendars and you can add them. Mm -hmm. So for example, me and Golda can have a shared calendar mm -hmm. and we'll put things on there like shoot the podcast today mm -hmm. and I'll open it up mm -hmm. and I got to shoot the podcast with Golda. Wanru snacks. Go to Ralph's. <laughs> Go to Ralph's. <laughs> Buy snacks for Wanru. <laughs> and then I'll have my OBGYN visit, which Golda cannot see on there. She's going to grab it by the vulva. <laughs> I'm going to get grabbed by the vulva. For help. For help. This is a wellness podcast. <laughs> wellness. It's purely what we're saying. Oh, God. All right. For those who are still sticking around after that <laughs> mental image, uh, do you have any more tips? Oh, I do. Go I get do, good. actually. Uh, let's see. I said that. I said, oh, uh, yes, I said that already. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I'm I think I'm good. Oh, the, something that I do feel like uh, I definitely would like to highlight is don't be afraid to delegate. Tell me more. Let me say it again. Don't be afraid to delegate. Time is of the essence here. If there's a way for you to save time, then hire somebody to do that thing that you don't want to do that, that sucks up a lot of your time. As an example, my parents came into town and I was getting the house ready because they're staying in the house during their visit with me. And one of the big things that I needed to do was to clean the yard and to do all the gardening. And normally I like to do it myself because I find that there's like therapeutic for advantages sure. of mm -hmm. gardening and pulling weeds and things like that. But for whatever reason, I just wasn't feeling it this time. <laughs> and I knew it was going to take hours upon hours of my day to get the yard looking, looking good. So uh, what I did was I just hired a gardener to pick up the leaves, to water the plants, to haul out the trash to the curb, those, those types of things. If, if there are things that you can, sh where you can shave off some time and, and focus on other things, then hire somebody to do it. Yeah. If you, especially yeah. if you can afford it. The thing yeah. I hate to do, the frog that I hate to swallow every year is doing my taxes. Ooh. So then yeah. I found an accountant who does my taxes for me. Perfect. Now, now I have to pay her. But yeah. I, I'm getting a refund anyway. Money well spent, I would imagine. You know, the peace of mind that it gives me to hand over her my stack of random papers <laughs> <laughs> and for her to give me back this beautifully crafted and organized with a bow on it oh man it is the nice best isn't it feeling and also yeah. i have the peace of mind that if anything goes wrong a professional looked at it yeah that's half of the reason why i hate it is because mm -hmm. i'm afraid i'm gonna make a mistake yeah and it's so freaking tedious yeah but not only her, but she has her assistants work on it, create mm -hmm. a nice little package. And then if I have any questions about my upcoming year, I ask her mm -hmm. best money I ever spent. And it's not that much more than TurboTax. Yeah. So I'm like, what? I don't even, I am not even going to waste any mental energy on this. Because mm -hmm. if you try to save money in every single little spot, in the long run, it's just causing you more stress. Yes. Yes, definitely. I, I absolutely believe in delegating. <laughs> <laughs> I, wherever I can, I will delegate and I will, you know, 
It will take some money or it could be in kind, Mm -hmm. right? So if someone helps you with one thing, maybe you can help them with something else, right? And it might not take you so much time to do that something else for them. Um, But definitely I feel like delegating is good. That's that's why like uh, Grubhub is so good and (laughs) Instacart is so good. People who don't want to spend time going to the grocery store. You just hire somebody to do it for you. Here's my grocery list. There you go. Wamo bamo. One hour saved. <laughs> right? You pay whatever it is. I don't know, 10 bucks or whatever it is. Shoot. Why not? <laughs> Why not? You just bought yourself an hour to do something else. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. In your day. Uh, so I'm definitely a, a strong believer in delegating where you can, finding an expert in things that you still need to do. Like I remember when we were looking for, Gertie and I were looking for, like, how are we going to design our album? We're like, well, we'll do it. And we're like, no, it's going to take way too much time <laughs> to figure out how to use Adobe and all this noise. So we're like, no, let's just hire somebody to do it. <laughs> so that was huge and, and absolutely the right thing to do. Saved us a ton of time. And it was done by a wonderful people. Uh, and it, we're, it's the best decision ever. So mm. where you can delegate, delegate it out, save you some time. Great tip. Great yeah. tip. Any other tips you have? All right. So the last thing I want to say yes. about this whole time management thing, because now we've saved so much time, right, is find some time every day to do the thing that, that you love and that nurtures you. Because if you evaluate the hours in the day that you spend doing things, think of those hours as you're giving away pieces of yourself, Oh, okay, that's so deep, Monroe. I'm, I'm going to get real deep here, guys. That's so deep. grab yourself by your wherever you want to grab yourself because it's going to get deep. <laughs> so I give away eight hours every day to my company. Yes. Almost eight hours. Okay. 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 That just goes to them. Okay. Okay. I give away three hours for just eating. <laughs> three hours a day? <laughs> you know, like preparing Are food. you eating like a... Bison <laughs> preparing food, oh, I see. Good, getting food, thinking about food, okay. eating my food, okay. drinking, drinking coffee. Okay, okay, right. Three hours. Those are mostly sure. pleasurable, but okay. I, I don't mind okay. giving those time away. I see. I see. And then I give an hour away to Facebook. I give oh. an hour away to Instagram. Ooh. The only thing I don't give hours away to is I don't watch much TV. Meaning I don't watch much. Uh, what is that called? Uh, like uh, broadcast TV or cable mm, TV. I mm-hmm. just occasionally watch a Netflix show on the weekend, but I rarely watch TV. So that's kind of where I save a lot of time. But I watch a lot of TV. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a couple of ways to think about mm, that. Like, mm. are those hours for me? Some people think those Netflix hours are for them. Sure. Yeah. And I sometimes YouTube is for me. Mm. And I like to set aside some time as much as I can for me to nurture me. So it could just be 10 minutes. I usually spend it petting my dog. Aww. I give him my full-blown attention 10 minutes a day. That's a good way to spend time. Yeah. And it's so nurturing for me and for my sure. dog. I love it. I, he loves it. I also spend some time to do something really frivolous, like I might play my ukulele. Ah. I might. One of my favorite things to do is I have a playlist, and I play the playlist, and I sing along. Oh, I love that. I do that in the car. I do that before work. I do that I at home that. while I'm cleaning. Mm-hmm. The playlist is so rejuvenating. And I really listen to my playlist. I very I cultivate that playlist nice. for a good feeling. Nice. Or it could just be things like like reading or mm. or get doing creative things like baking. Mm. Because those hours And Wanru is a phenomenal oh. baker, by the way, if I haven't said that before. Stop, I'll stop, keep reiterating stop. it. But I love it yeah. and it nurtures me and I love sharing it. And we love getting it. Yeah. yeah we great. love getting the baked goods. See what a good feedback cycle I'm getting right here. Yes. So, but those hours belong to me. Yeah. And one of the saddest things I heard recently is uh, there's this guy I know, he's a doctor, mm-hmm. and he said that one of his greatest ta- greatest talents was playing the piano and singing. Mm. And he said that my job, because he kept going up in his job, one of the things that fell by the wayside is singing and playing the piano. Mm. And I thought to myself, that's so sad. That's your God-given gift. What a waste. What a, what a, what a waste. And if it's something that he truly enjoyed, wouldn't it be so nurturing mm. to say half an hour every day? I'm going to sit down and play. Yeah. Or an hour a day. 
Mm-hmm. I'm going to listen to music that I really love and think about that music because mm-hmm. again, it's the focus, right? Mm-hmm. So think about that music, think about a composition. Mm-hmm. Well, how nurturing would that be? And you know, he's going to be so much better in his job anyways, which is very technical because mm-hmm. he's mur- nurtured himself an hour a day. Mm-hmm. So that's the way I nurture myself. You find a way to feed back your, get your energy back. And yeah. don't forget, you're giving your hours to everyone else. Find a way to give an hour to yourself. What will you do with your hour? What do you think? Of, what are some things that you'll do for yourself? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, girl, I got a list of scrolls. Oh my God. <laughs> my papyrus is <laughs> full. <laughs> Your papyrus. Um, Let's hear how old I am. Well, <laughs> I, I definitely feel like when, like, again, full circle here, when we first started, we said that time management isn't this corporate, like, yeah. hoo-ha, hoo-ha term, terminology yeah. or the time management books that you see in the business section of your favorite bookstore or, you know, on Amazon or whatever, or at the airport. You ever go to the airport and see like, had time management for leaders. Yeah. Four hour work week. Yeah. Mm, you know, all that kind of <laughs> stuff. Right. Yeah. I think, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, I believe that it doesn't necessarily address the, the more holistic approach, which is what I'm hearing from you, which is what are the things that give you joy and what, what sparks joy for you? <laughs> Marie Kondo. Uh, Maria Kondo. Kundalini. Kundalini. That's how you pronounce Kundalini. it. Kundalini. Okay. Yes. I, I think that you you definitely need to look at this as not just this abyss, never-ending papyrus of things that you need to do, but you need to stop and think about what you need for yourself and do those things. Do those things that you find enjoyable and that will enrich you. Whatever. And, and, you know, if you need to schedule it in, then schedule it in. But to, to make that a priority for yourself, uh, I believe that 100%. And I think that that is, that is our little twist to this whole thing of time management is that at the end of the day, this is something that will only serve you and, and enrich you and hopefully make you a better person. Golda, whenever I spend any time with you, it enriches me. I appreciate that coming and- from you. <laughs> It enriches me as well. I love that I heard that. No? (laughs) Goldis, practicing (laughs) accepting compliments. That's the best you can do right now. And you have to say, I have to tell you, Wanru is coaching me on how to receive compliments better by acknowledging it. Because I have a tendency to say, no, 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 you're crazy, whatever. But now I have to say, thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate the comment, and that means a lot coming from you. That's what I've learned. This is going to be a whole nother podcast, yes. but I think we've learned a lot today. Thank you for Absolutely. sharing. Absolutely, Thank you for spending your time with us <gasps> and listening to this podcast and listening to this main topic of time management. I We hope that you find it helpful and that you can start implementing some of these tips right away. Here is a segment of products we love. Someday this will come true. Dream sponsors. So the Gone Roo show currently doesn't have any sponsors. What Boo! up? <laughs> what up, Trader Joe's? Still waiting for that call. Yeah, Ralph's. <laughs> I've been stalking you for like five months now. And but nothing. We do have a whole list of companies and organizations that we wish would sponsor us. So we're going to talk about our dream sponsors. Yay. And these are people that we wish would sponsor us because we actually have used these services or are have some sort of link to these organizations. Yeah. So this week, what's your dream, dream sponsor? Golda? Well, uh, in light of the time management theme we have going on here, and one of the things that I mentioned was to delegate your tasks in order to save time is a company called Angie's List. Oh, do you are you know what Angie's List is? Only a little bit. Can you tell me more? Angie's List is a website that you can find online. And basically you go there if you are in need of several different things as it relates to your home or apartment to help you save time or to find an expert in certain things. So as an example, they have garage door specialists. Mm -hmm. They have someone who can uh, stain your deck. That's a real thing. Okay. That's not a euphemism for something else. Deck staining is another way to put it. (laughs) We have to be very careful how we say that. Deck staining. Like something you're going to go outside and sit on. You're like redwoods. (laughs) Red, redwood, redwood 
usually is used for deck. <laughs> So anyway, they have deck staining. They also have... If uh, your deck is weathered and fading and la- lackluster. Yeah, maybe losing some spark. Some vitality. And you don't want to you don't want to be on the deck. And you don't want to invite people over to you don't, sit on your deck. Yeah. You're ashamed of the deck. It actually, it's a, your deck has become an eyesore. Yeah. What better way to rejuvenate rejuvenate it? By going to Angie's list. And looking for a deck stainer. You got to stain the deck. They will refinish the deck, Mm -hmm. peel off that top layer, Mm -hmm. put on a stain, Mm -hmm. and restore it to its former glory. And then you'll be proud of your deck. Yeah. And you'll be proud to share your deck with people. Yeah. And you want to invite people over to sit on your deck again. Multiple times. Multiple people. Yeah, multiple people. Uh, the other thing that I've seen with, uh, with deck staining is they pound the deck. <laughs> In and order to, to rejuvenate it. Right? Pound it to what? To, to take to, off to, that? To get, the, get to, the, to the good part of the deck because it's just been so weathered. Uh, or maybe uh, it's been neglected. Yeah. So they have so deck you know. They have deck staining deck there. Staining they also have landscaping, gardening. They have uh, HVAC repair. They have paving. They wow. also have some other really cool stuff that I was I was looking at it earlier. They have a feng shui experts on Angie's list. On Angie's list, it's like the Yelp, but for your home or apartment, like if whatever things that you need fixing, they're they're a good place to go to, and they're honest um, evaluations or ratings because they uh, people who did or the companies that are on there can't remove ratings or anything. Um, so they have feng shui experts, and then they also have this thing called recliner repair. <laughs> what? So if your recliner, if your lazy boy is in need of repair, there's somebody that knows how to do it. So all these really kind of random things that maybe you're thinking, oh, my God, my recliner is on the fritz, but I don't have time to think about it. Well, here you go. You got somebody I can do for you. Or, oh, I don't have time to, to look after my deck. What do I do? There you go. You just go to Angie's list. By the way, I cannot think of a more first world problem then your recliner is no longer working yeah the way it should and you can't recline the yeah. way you really want i'm not maximizing my reclining right now because mm, yeah. the foot thing isn't coming up right that's right. so inconvenient for me but you know i can these... only sit in, in comfort but not a hundred percent covering because i can't put my feet my feet up yeah a lot of these recliners are highly technical you know and then so they need specialists for those things. And, you know, wow. maybe for these people that are having a recliner and sitting on the recliner is their favorite thing in the world and gives them joy. Like that father from Frasier. Did you ever watch that show, Frasier? Yeah, yeah. And the guy that played his father, he, he brought in his favorite recliner that was all taped up with duct tape and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe that, there are people out there that exist like that. And yeah. it'll give them some happy. So Angie's List is a really wonderful uh, place where you can uh, start delegating some of these things, these tasks that you are not so happy about or, or that are that would be a time suck. So that's, that's mine. It. Angie's list. Call us. What I'm a- going to look for someone to snake my drain right away. Mm, is there a clog? It's getting, it's not flowing as smoothly as I would like. So mm. I think I'm, that's one of the things I would like to look into somebody to snake my drain because i think i think drains are also um they can also be full of rust (laughs) yes from disuse from disuse yeah that's also a problem i have i see okay well angie's list is the place to go (laughs) if you want to snake your drain okay perfect perfect. all right very good what about you wanru what uh, what is your who is your dream sponsor it's one of the sexiest dream sponsors you'll find out there let's hear it it is the hamilton beach 12 quart crock pot what? What? The Hamilton Hamilton Beach twelve quart crock pot. Wow, that is a, that is a mouthful. Isn't let it? me let me double check. 
What is what, why why ten why? quart capacity? Sorry, they come in different capacities. It's a you pot. you find the capacity that works for you. So why do you like this crock pot? Because I like to batch cook on ah. a Sunday or Saturday. Okay, and that's and you pack your lunches for the whole week. Talk Ooh. about time efficiency, right? Good one. And one of the things that I like to do is to use my crock pot, especially okay. in the winter months. Yeah, for stoops, stoops. <laughs> What's a stoop? stoop? Get off my stoop. <laughs> DM and the stuss. <laughs> what? the stuss? What's a stuss? A stuss, you know, like Iris, a stuss, beep, a stew. A oh, stew, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, anyway. I was trying to say stew and soup. Stew and soups. And it came out stoop. Mm. Anyway, okay. for all your stewing needs, your soup needs, your curry needs, yeah. your meat cooking, you can do a whole brisket yeah. one if you get one big enough. You can make adobo. Yes, you Filipino can. Filipino chicken adobo. You can mm. do a slow roast, roast, a uh, slow roasted chicken in there. Get get a small one. Oh, yeah. Okay. So these things are amazing. Set it. Okay. And then you come back at the end of the day. You, I mean, start it in the morning. You come back at the end of the day. You have a meal ready for you. Oh, that sounds delicious. And yeah. you, how long have you had your Hamilton Beach co- crock pot? <laughs> <laughs> so I picked that brand because it's one of the highest rated. On Amazon. And when I think of a crock pot, I always think of that brand, Hamilton mm. Beach. I don't know why. I have another brand. Okay. It's so old and beat up. I don't even know what it is anymore. It's like okay. rubbed off. Okay. But that's the thing. These things are like tanks. You can't not destroy them. And it sounds like too, with, with these crock pots, it's minimal effort. sounds like you just kind of like chop, roughly chop a couple of onions, maybe mm-hmm. a couple of carrots, throw it in there. Mm-hmm. You don't have to stir it. That's how lazy it is. <laughs> That's how lazy you can be. Just leave it in there and then it's done. Yeah. Okay. And I actually use the America's Test Kitchen Slow Cooker Manual. Oh. And th- there's a, like, a surprising amount of things you can make in there. You can make risotto in your slow cooker. Mm. You can make a whole cheesecake if you want. You can make stuffed bell peppers. All these things cheesecake. you would normally okay. associate. And they have little tips and tricks as to how to do it. Oh, wonderful. So highly recommend. Wonderful. Well, Call us Hamilton Beach, call us Angie's List, and if you ever need your pipe strained or your deck stained, you know where to go. And that does it for us for this episode on time management. So as always, when we close one rule, we ask each other what we are taking away. What are you taking away from today's episode? I'm taking away this visual image of Golda like surrounded by her stuff. Mm -hmm. And then slowly the piles get lower Mm -hmm. and slowly more free space opens up. Yeah. And then I see your little face like peeking out from behind your stuff. And then I see your your shoulders (laughs) and I see you breaking through uh, just like you would break through a forest or something. The forest being the things that are holding you back and the path forward being the direction of your life. Yeah. I like that image. That's a great tip for Makes me feel light. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah. So (laughs) that's what I envision is just you decluttering and and how useful that is actually for overall time management. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like it. I just, or maybe I just like envisioning you breaking out of stuff. Oh, (laughs) like the Hulk? (laughs) Yeah. Like tearing off your Me Hulk. Going through like a building wall, brick oh, wall yeah, or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. Well, I mean, I thank you for that. I, I like that image as well. For me, what I'm going to take away, I think, is something that you mentioned early on about Warren Buffett and, and his take on time management, where you list down your 25 things that you want to do. And then after looking at those 25 things now, list the, the only five things. I think that definitely... That's a solid tool to use that you could use right away in order for you to prioritize what's important for you mm-hmm. and have some clarity, right? And then, then from there, actually put some action behind it. So I think that's a, a very doable tool. Yeah, you yeah. can do that today, actually. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm already thinking about it. I mean, I know you mentioned it before, but it's reminding me, yeah, I, I need to look at my top 25 and top five. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm going to take away from today. Yeah. And the funny thing is, I think you will surprise yourself with what may be on that list. How so? I don't know. I didn't know dog petting would be so high on my list. (laughs) But it's high up there. I spend a lot of time petting my dog every day. Yeah. This is actually a really good tool to get to know yourself a little bit more, right? Yeah. 
I yeah. feel like. And I think, too, that depending on the time of your life, this list might change. Yeah, so don't be afraid to reevaluate yourself at regular intervals. Awesome. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you all for joining us today on the Ganru Show, where we talked about time management. If you enjoyed today's episode, we invite you to subscribe to us and share us the show, the Ganru Show, with your friends and your family and anybody else who will listen. Uh, now, remember, we do tape every episode live, and we are have this tape available every single episode in our. Technicolor glory. I know that's so old school, <laughs> but you can see us uh, in our color glory uh, and on YouTube. So just look for the Gone Roo show on YouTube and you'll find us straight away. Uh, and you can also subscribe to us while you're at it. Yeah. And don't forget, we are available on every podcast provider out there. So that includes Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, Overcast, Stitcher. And you can also ask your home device to mm -hmm. play the Ganru show, either Siri or Alexa. How would you do that, Golda? Well, you would do this. Hey, Siri, play the Ganru show. Now I'm playing podcast, the Ganru show. Or and that's all you got to do. Hey, Siri, stop. That's all you got to do. You just got to have a weird accent and say the Ganru. Yeah, if like, you say Ganru, I don't think they'll know what you're talking about. It's the Ganru show. Right, like it's if you're from like Texas, El Paso, Texas, mm. then, then they'll understand. Extend those vowels. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so until next time. I'm Golda. And I'm Wanru. And this has been the Ganru show. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye.